everybody. James Jaeger and Jacob Herman back here with Tad Response. Thanks for listening, watching, whatever you're doing. We appreciate you guys. And uh, we are talking more about prepping and survival and all that good stuff. And we were just to the point of we had talked about uh, some rice and stuff like that. Let's talk about grain mills because grain mills don't shit. That's kind of how this conversation started back yeah. in the day. Yeah. What was it you said? John Willis said, shut up, the adults are talking. And I'm like, you'll starve to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these people are talking about something I know about. Uh, grain mills, right? Like, I've been over, and I'll tell you the kind of the defining moment of grain mills. I went over to another prepper buddy of mine's house back when frugal squirrels was a thing. Yeah. Was yeah. Inter- we used to all get together. Like, you didn't meet people. From, you would never call a dude from the internet to pick you up at your house, right? right. And... You definitely wouldn't meet women from the internet for relations. Now we just like, it's like fishing, right? But then we would have like prepper meetups. Like you, you know, like you'd like figure out who that, like the, we know each other. Right, right. right. And uh, I went over to guy's house one time. We're going to have like a prepper meetup. And uh, there was one of them $49 family grain mills in the backyard on the ground. Okay. They get thrown there. <laughs> uh, but like, you know, and you could get them. They used to be advertised everywhere. Um, when we first started prepping, the there was no keto. There was no farm to table. There was no uh, what like people didn't like make their own food again. Ever like the idea of fat, like McDonald's was doing salads and that was healthy. The the ability to buy good food in this country's progressed hugely in the past fifteen years. Right. Um but at the you know, now you can order like people that aren't preppers and gun owners have grain meals and dehydrators because they want to live he- eat healthily, right. grow their own food. But back then, you know, you had very limited options of ordering a grain meal. Most of it was from American Survival Guide, right? And the Country Living Grain Meal, which has been made for God knows how long now, is was is it three hundred two hundred ninety nine or three hundred ninety nine dollars for the basic model? Yeah, it's it's a couple hundred several couple hundred bucks. bucks. <laughs> but the alternative was this silver thing. And it was forty nine ninety five, right? And uh, if you you would starve to death trying right. to, trying to grind enough wheat, right? To to if it didn't break, yeah. I, um, I would tell people you're going to end up with flat teeth like the Indians if you yeah, don't. You might as well go out and get two rocks, <laughs> or just soak the stuff and eat it like <laughs> gruel, you know. Uh, grain mills don't shit themselves. Baking bread is hard. That's why you have everybody, when you get married, uh, it seems like nowadays you, you, you get a bread maker. For some reason, your wife is going to take up, your new wife is going to take up <laughs> making bread in the Little Debbie bread maker. Never understood. I never got that, right? Yeah. Like I, um, but, and funny story, my girlfriend, Allison, who is like the greatest human being on the face of the earth. She is absolutely Her wonderful. Her mother makes bread by hand, like mm-hmm. real bread. Right. Like a war, like she could be in the bread bake off. Right. right? And she looked at me one day and she goes, um, you look at that bologna sandwich like my mom looks at a, pe- a, a loaf of bread that she spent six hours making and that's how much I know you like bologna. <laughs> I love one. There ain't nothing better than two pieces I, of little. I, I, I'm a fan. Yeah. I miss the fact. I miss when you could go to any country gas station and get a yeah. rag bologna sandwich. And she makes fun of me because I want the bologna with the red ring and I want the bunny bread. Right. And then the the cheap yellow mustard that looks like a little barrel. Yeah. That's the that's the best sandwich. But <laughs> um, bread is hard to make. And it over, like, this is a little bit of a history lesson. Most preppers could do with, like, learning about how our ancestors lived. But. Like we talked about in the last episode, most civilizations in developing countries spend all day looking for fuel and water. Well, they're looking for fuel to make their bread, whether it's a, a risen loaf like we in uh, you know America eat, or it's a flat bread or a tortilla or a, yep. a pita or whatever their use of grain is. They're looking for fuel because it takes a long time to make. Well, when I would uh, eat off the economy, off the local economy in Iraq, the uh, the, the flat bread that they had 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 charcoal on it yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they, they charcoal and a lot of people you know as i i've about decided that you'd be better off to make uh corn flour and just make tortillas 
Like it's a it's a lot less use of of resources and a lot easier to do. But that you know, a lot of people have wheat stocked up because as when I, when I see you <laughs> eat a bologna burrito, I, I will I will consider Dude, the other that. Day I got up and I made some eggs and put bologna in it and I wrapped it in a tortilla with hot that's, sauce. That's different. Um, I'm talking about mustard, bologna. Well, we're not going to have any tortilla. fields bologna during the apocalypse, and we won't have any of that good pepper jack cheese, <laughs> and uh, that you get sliced off. And we probably will run out of mustard. So we're like, like when we're eating squirrel tacos, you know, or TVP textured vegetable protein mountain house tacos, right on our tortillas. Even the new MREs have switched to tortillas. You know, the, right. But uh, so back to bread. Baking bread is hard. And that's probably one of the things that if you're like there, that's why we have bakers. Let me let me let me kind of jump in here. Go for Baking it. bread is hard if you have an oven. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Imagine how hard it is over a fire. Yeah. Um, if you're prepping, and this is like people don't think about it, right? People don't. They have this stuff. If you're gonna prep and make bread, you need to build an uh, like a one of them uh, coal fired pizza ovens outside yep. and you need to figure out how to bake in it yeah better start you're not going to cook bread on the coleman yeah if you're pretty good you could probably do it in a dutch oven but it, but again you got to practice you it's can't, hard yeah it's hard you um, gotta practice that so you got all this wheat what are you going to do with it right like i bought the wheat like the internet told me to right now i have the grain grinder that's a perishable unless you're going to practice what to do with the wheat there's no reason to buy it Yep, because you're just gonna soak it and eat it like mush. Then I, I don't like, right. like you know what is that stuff? The not oats, not oatmeal. It's a cream of wheat. All right, <laughs> right. Oh, oh, that's what you need the Tabasco for to kill the flavor of the cinnamon and the wheat. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute, cinnamon is delicious, but let's move on. Uh, you know, there's no. You've got to learn how to use it because you buy a grain grinder, put it in the closet. Grinding that stuff to a consistency that is usable is a skill and an art, and that's why there, for a hundred or two hundred years, we had bakers. Right. You would go to the butcher to get meat. You were unable to process and raise your own meat, and you would go to the baker to get bread. And that is a reason why we have bakeries. Right. There's people that specialized in that. Specialization is key yep. to society. Well, back in the day, you know, when they used to say, well, you know, the, they give the prisoners bread and water. That's back when we had bread that actually had nutrients in it. Right. The uh, the bunny bread that you like is just really cake, really. Um, it's real it, nice. It doesn't. Yeah, it's 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 delicious, but it's not it's not nourishing. And um, so, but, it, but the, the, what I'm saying is the payoff is if you learn how to make that bread that whole grain bread that's actual real nourishment um that can that can make life better i mean it's a i mean if you're used to eating rice and you get a slice of bread that's a morale booster i mean I, yeah I'm, I'm i'm saying i think it's a pain in the ass but i think the payoff is legit if you've got the resources right it like if you are in a disaster situation or um, you live in the burbs, right, and you're out in your backyard baking bread mm -hmm. for hours, mm -hmm. the neighbors are going to come over and beat your head in with an Allen wrench or a monkey wrench, right? Like, yep. like that stuff, like you can smell bread. Like you, if you go somewhere where there's a baker, you're like, man, that smells good. Now imagine if you're the only person cooking, how far you can smell that. Yeah, I tell people all the time, think about in the summertime, you smell the, the, the barbecue grills and that thing could be a mile away and you're not hungry. Yeah. If, if you're hungry, that's two miles away yeah. and you smell they, it. You can hear, you can, like guys talk about like they could smell the Viet Cong smoking a cigarette in the jungle. Yeah. Right? Like same thing. Hungry people will smell that. If you need to be situationally aware, I'm a big fan of having a grain grinder but i'm also a big fan of not living in the suburbs if you yep. live in the suburbs there's no need to be outside cooking grain you need to be trying to hide everything yep um buy a country living grain mill there is there is no substitute like there's no like i can that's your that's your hard cost right it's yep. like buying auto insurance or yep. buying the glock you're that's your sunk cost of being a prepper right is having a country living grain mill and set it up to run on a bicycle yep you cr you cranked that bad boy. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. need a team, yep. like a relief cranker. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, my mom hooked hers up, had an electric motor, motor jury rigged, right? Because she used hers all the time. Yeah, right. Uh, mom made all her, like, got grain, and that's how she lived yep. and cooked. She lived it. Yeah. Um, so she hooked it up an electric motor, but a, a, a belt's a belt. Yeah. But you could hook it up to a bicycle, just like they did in... 
the Patriots right. by James Wesley Rawls. Right. Um, imagine you you ground it, you did it all yourself, or Rebecca helped you crank it. I did it. Okay, you did it, and now there's more of you. Right. And say you would need three loaves of bread right. for the day. Right. Now imagine cranking yeah, that yeah, bad boy. Yeah. Between yeah. you, already went and got the water because yeah. you're by yourself, right? You're the yeah. dude, like all these dudes <laughs> in this fantasy. You've went and got all the water all day. So that took four or five hours. And then you chopped wood. Yep. Right? That's what yep. was a daily chore. And now you're going to crank your grain grinder for the last four. And at some point, you can start making your bread. Right. They. Hence the you, it takes a village. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's a, that's going to be for a, a long day. So, uh, so we talked about uh, water. We talked about food. Uh, and r- real quick on the food, back to the rice for just a second. Um, rice is an incomplete protein. Beans are an incomplete protein. Beans and rice are a complete protein, Mm -hmm. and it's still a vegetable protein, but the reason those things are served together and the reason you find them together in so many places in so many countries is they do form a complete protein, albeit a vegetable protein, but they do form a complete Mm -hmm. protein. So uh, that's why I believe you should store beans and rice. I don't mean the same bucket, but you should store them both. Um, it, it, same thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. So for like the, when you talk about the rice, there are a lot of cultures that don't have a bean like we think about it. Right. right. They don't have a pinto or a right. kidney bean, but they have a substitute. Yeah. There's some kind of legume. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you if you look at the Asian cultures, they have a substitute for that protein. I think it's usually a starch of some type. Uh-huh. Um, it, beans. Same thing. Buy them, but you can get bag bags. I'd find try to buy them at Costco. We're done with rice. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I thought we were talking about beans. Okay, I'm sorry. But people, one of the things is people are so used to getting canned beans. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like you notice this, like when you're like I notice it in my generation. Mm-hmm. What did, your grandma put up beans? My yeah. grandma put up beans. Yeah. Right. Like we, they didn't go to the store and buy pinto beans. Right. They came from the field. When they went to cook those mm-hmm. for Sunday, mm-hmm. what did they do? How did that happen? I think I think what you're asking me is they soaked them over right, right. on Saturday. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. like that's how you cook them. Nowadays, people get beans from a can. Right. They're already soaked. They're already soaked. So, so what I think what Jacob's trying to tell you is this: part of the cooking beans takes, we'll call it. Uh, 12 hours 11 hours to soak them and one hour to cook them yeah and uh so um and so uh the the thing is like like rice rice expands to three to five times so if you have a cup of rice that expands to about three to five cups of cooked rice beans are the same way and uh and so that soaking the reason you soak them is remember what jacob said people spend most of their time doing uh, fuel uh, getting fuel for the fire. Well, you have to you you use way less fire if you do the slow cook method of just soaking beans. You could cook raw beans, but you would take so much fuel that it's not really cost efficient or you know mm-hmm. work efficient. So you could just soak them overnight. Same thing with the rice. You can soak rice for some time before you start cooking and decrease the cook time of the rice. And didn't you take your beans? You make baked beans out of them. Yeah. After you know, it's if you there's a great channel on YouTube called Townsend, and what it is, it's it's living colonial style, mm-hmm. and I've been learning a ton about. It. They cook colonial style, and they okay. use the recipes from that era, okay. um, and it's really interesting. They would make beans on Saturday, yeah. right, and they would eat the beans with a meat, mm-hmm. and then they would bake those beans. Again, for the meal for the rest of the week in a crock. And a lot of times that's, you know, you, you can eat baked beans cold. I think people are so used to like everything has to be cooked and fresh and blah. Like you can eat on stuff for yeah a, a while, right? Yeah, like yeah. eat on it. And uh, there are wh- people that won't won't drink milk after the best if used by right. date. Right. And it's good after that. Yeah, those people are going to be like looking at that half squirrel head and be like, mm, could I suck the brains out of that? It'd be yeah. tasty. Uh, mm-hmm. Learning to what to use what you store. There's a reason every t- like what was it? H- Huck Finn didn't chop the wood, 
right? Every Disney movie, Old Yeller, like every Western, yeah. the kids are chopping wood. Yeah. Why? You burn a ton of fuel. So think how long a pot of rice takes on your stove. Yeah. It takes an hour to cook rice, yeah, right. right? And it takes an hour to cook beans. Well, you're, if you're using a camp stove, you're going to be burning fuel. Let's just say you're going to be burning a couple of hours of fuel a day, mm-hmm. right? If you're burning wood, you're going to be burning wood all day, and that's you're not going to be. You're going to run real quick. The smaller the fire you can make, the better off you are. Yep. But you will chop wood daily. That's a chore because you burn so much fuel cooking real food, dried rice, dried beans, you know, meat that's that's cured. It takes a lot, and I think that one of the underlying things of all this is you need to get and practice that. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so. <clears throat> That's uh, that's beans. Let's talk about bullets. And uh, you know, a lot of people that listen to to me, they want to want to talk about the guns and, and all that stuff. What what are your thoughts on you know? Because you talk about they some of these guys buy a shotgun, they think they can shoot a deer with a slug and all that. So, um, for 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 folks that are kind of new to this, and it seems like probably kind of overwhelming sometimes. What gun or guns? do you think are ideal for the prepper slash survival guy like starting fresh yeah like, if, you, if you didn't have anything man if if i like if somebody came to me and like, what should i buy i'd be like i'm my go-to is like an sks right and I, there's a couple of reasons for that i know everybody wants an m4 right right um and and i've got different reasoning you're probably not going to get in a gunfight after the first day two days three days we, you know the, the likelihood of you getting in a battle mm-hmm. and if you're starting and you're asking me what kind of gun to buy you should probably not try to get in a gunfight anyway right because it's going to the I, gun's I, a moot point i know but th- um, for the sake of the question the sake of the question is buy sks or a 30 30 lever action and the reason is is those are those are i i'm in the gun business mm-hmm. and there's some really shoddy construction of ar-15s in the, oh yeah in the budget yeah. realm the, the odds are if you're listening to this and you built your gun it's not good i right. mean that's just i, I see them break right. all the time Part, and people lose stuff and parts if you're not a gun guy and you're not a gun handler having an ar-15 all the crap to keep up with it and keep it running it's probably not your style yeah a marlin a 30 30 lever gun that you buy at a pawn shop for three hundred fifty dollars and ten boxes of thirty thirty ammo ammo will serve you better in getting food for the table and shooting at a threat mm-hmm. t- to run them off the unarmed ones right, right right or an SKS because those are quality manufactured pieces. There's a reason like an SKS made in 1950 will still run today. Yeah, you load by hand. You don't have anything to lose. You can put a sling on it, shoot a deer with it. Basically, yeah. Um, there's a lot of options. You know, a guy that is well versed in guns probably is not asking that. I tell people like, a, there, you can have the twenty two, mm-hmm. right? But unless you know how to skin the game and cook it, it's a moot point. Right. Bu- buying it does not make you a hunter. Right. No owning gun doesn't make you a gunfighter. Yeah, right. That's it's. Yeah, right, It's right. not a magic talisman. Right. It's kind of um, like gray males don't shoot red. <laughs> yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. A rifle does not make a rifleman. Okay. Um, what would you recommend? You you've seen you've I've seen your gun tastes uh, evolve over the years or change as the need dictates, right? As yeah. you mm-hmm. as you're like, hey, I'm going to go do this, and this is the, yeah. why we need this. Uh, Four sixteen ribby. Nice. No, I'm just kidding. Nice. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's what that the that's what that the tan one is a four sixteen. Oh, I'm bl- aware. <laughs> so that bad boy, we come in. Uh, but, yeah. but but um, I, I I don't have any problem with the SKS at all. Um, I don't have any problem with that. I would I would probably it'd be tough, but maybe a, a scout rifle, like a three hundred eight scout rifle, uh, like Mossberg Scout or Savage Scout. One hundred percent. Yeah. That in. Also good, you know, simple operation. Yeah. You know, here, kill a deer, kill a dude. I'd probably go for the Savage over the Mossberg, just the way it's long term construction. Well, I'll, the I'll, Ruger's a hell of a gun right now. Right, I'll say uh, the Ruger. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll say this. I've got way more time in on the Savage, so I like it a lot. Uh, the the Mossberg. I've, I don't have as much time, but it's it's coming up strong. I don't think it'll surpass the Savage, but I think it's a damn good rifle. I I would love to play with it. I you know I'm just going by purely 
levels of known manufacturing. Yeah, gotcha. Like you got from it. a completely different fair, viewpoint. Fair, yeah, fair enough. Fair um, enough. Fair enough. But but uh, so Savage Scout with a with a Scout rifle scope on it, or some kind of one to four or one to six scope. Yeah. Um, I will. We can dispel some myths. Okay. The Fires Blog just had a great video. Um, the Mosin Nagant. Oh my God! It's 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 the TFB called the shit stick. Uh, I <laughs> laughed. Like guys have guys. If you reached a pinnacle that you can afford to put back, say five or ten rifles for guard duty. Yeah. Right. The Mosin Nagants is just as good as any because they're never going to be shot. Right. right. They're a, they're a right. force deterrent. Right. It's like all those semi-automatic AKs that the CIA bought for the Ugandans. Right. Yeah, right. Like um, most preppers are not to the level of needing to worry about guns for extra people. They need to be worrying about themselves and their immediate family. Yeah. Right. And getting those levels up. Um, yeah, yeah. I've heard it all, man. Like the guy, the whole, like, you remember, it's whatever surplus is at the time. Yeah. Yeah. What so hot. like when there was all those model 10 Smith 38 specials, people are like, well, that's the greatest prepper gun you can get. And I'm like, what tree did you fall out of? Right. Like that's, it's hard to carry. There's a reason the cops got out of it. Right. Like if you're, <laughs> if you're putting together today, somebody stumbles across our po- this podcast and they don't own a gun they're just getting into prepping mm-hmm. i would say go buy even as much as like there's if you can't afford a real glock right you can get a 40 there's, and as much as i hate this is it this is the this mo- is the gun surplus mo- model 10 model 10 and and be, you know it, could you make this work yeah, if you didn't have an, right. any guns better than right. no gun but but the, but here's the thing that's the gun you make work when, when you're caught flat-footed, we're talking about preparing in advance. Yeah. And if you're preparing in advance, you should you should get a firearm and training and all the equipment it takes to support that gun before the emergency I happens. I have a better gun than this buried in a barn somewhere. <laughs> like, when you think about it. Like, right. yeah, like this right, is the right. gun, to, to me... The, uh, this kind of gun is the top gun. You you put a box of ammo and load it with oil and stick it under a fence post. Yeah. On the way that, you, that your backup route. Yeah. To get out of town, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, you know, guns have come. Guns and the price and quality of guns has come a long ways in the past few years. So to me, when a guy's like, "Hey, I'm starting prepping," you can buy a brand new Canic mm-hmm. for two hundred ninety nine dollars. Yep. And it's a good. It's gun. a good gun. Um, I work there. Like no, it's, they're great, and, and, and I don't work there anymore, so they don't pay me to say that. No, hold on a second. I thought it was Th- great they, before. They used to be a channel sponsor. They're not anymore. Right. And, and I, I still tell people for to a buy prepper. Them. You know, that's a good. <laughs> that is a good gun. A, a Canic nine millimeter will will last. It's a it's a good a good gun, and it's not just an entry level gun. We're not looking at what can you can afford. That's as good a gun as a Sig three twenty. Yeah, you could carry it every day. Yeah, every day. Now, as far as rifles, right? Like, and and I'm the world's worst. I've got more rifles. And yeah, Carter got liver. You remember pills. in the Patriots where Homeboy couldn't get all his guns in the Bronco? That's me. So um, listen, and the, uh, I don't. And you and I have have had the same and varying opinions over the years on guns. I'm not a fan of seven six two by thirty nine because of the ammo supply. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, but it, on the other hand, I just recommended SKS, and there's this this duality of man, right? Yeah. If you can go in and buy a good SKS, or you've got one, and you got a thousand rounds of ammo, that thousand rounds probably gonna last you a long time because you're not the type of person getting a gunfight. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'm not a fan of six five for the same reason. It's a, yeah. it's a, still a niche, even though they're making it every day. It's a niche caliber. A three oh eight or a five five six, you can shoot any animal east of the Mississippi with a five five six, except maybe, except maybe the elk. Now they've released that's changed a little bit over the years. You kill right? elk with a twenty two. It's if happened. You hit it right. It's happened. But it, yeah, I, it's not. It's not ideal. Um, you don't want to be chasing it. Uh, you know, the three oh eight is probably the 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 best a bolt action 308 like you were talking about the scout rifle when you get into semi automatic 308s yeah it, they get expensive yeah you get pricey for, quick for, for a good one for a yeah. good one yeah. i don't do the, is there a cheap one i'm not saying that like well the ptrs are junk they're not cheap either though like oh, you can buy a good okay uh, it, it's uh, the cheapest 308 it's, a, semi, it's still uh, a thousand uh, right yeah you know, you could get a, bra- a, a, a a Midwest or a Bravo company or a Daniel Defense. Yeah. You could get a top-tier 
AR. Yeah. For what a not as good 308. Yeah. You know, that's. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I would, you know, people, I think, and you need to buy ammo and cleaning kit and take a class and, and learning to use the, the weapon is, is part of it. Don't. And I think, is this a good segue to talk about the idea of you're going to be a hunter? Oh, well, that's not really where we're at. Okay, but, but, well, what, but where are we at? Just gun, just guns right now. Just guns, yeah. Mechanic, you, you and you know, you, and before you upgrade, like before you let the guys be like, you got to get a Glock. Buy your wife a Canic, right? Or your partner, whoever yeah, yeah, you're. Yeah, right. You know, get another Canic because yeah. it's better for two people to have two Canics, yeah. than two, one person to have one Glock. You don't need. You, listen, the Canic's fine. The, it, right. I carried a Canic for a year. I'd carry one right now. I wouldn't bat an eye. Our rental guns are Canics. They run like crazy. I'd really have a Canic in this Model 10. Oh, yeah. There's no <laughs> there's no doubt. There's no doubt. <laughs> Unless you was going to whoop somebody with it, then this would be. <laughs> um, you know, rifles, there's a lot. of uh, there's a The problem with uh, the AR-15 is people buy bad ones. Yeah, right. But it, they, they look for the cheapest one they can get yeah. or whatever the case may be. Um, but it, I, I'll, I'll tell you this. You you could walk in going with this SKS thing. You could walk into any gun shop and buy an SKS. I think they're around three or four hundred. Still dollars. find one three or four hundred bucks. Okay, uh, I have never seen an SKS that didn't work. Right. You could go into any gun shop and buy any SKS and do a pretty good job of having a gun that works. And you can load that bad boy at the top. You don't need nothing else with it. Right. And more than likely, it's got a cleaning kit in the stock. Yeah. Right. So I mean, like I'm just saying, like it's it's kind of hard to go wrong with that with that, you know, that thinking. You know. Yeah. And it's that's a long term or a thirty thirty. Yeah, yeah. Like how many thirty thirties do you I, seen break? I, I, yeah, but I'm not a fan because like SKS ammo is easier to find than thirty thirty ammo. Yeah. You, so the other thing about the scrounging, you see it a lot, and I guess a lot of this is our year spent on the forums. Like you, yeah. you have a forum. Yeah, right. And some like, and it's our people. Yeah, right. It's a forum of us. You're right. And there's still shit posted on there, and you're like, what? Yeah, right. Like, w- where did this train of like you've taken twenty? Cl- you are a like there'll be a dude and he'll be like a like a green beret like a no shit like and he'll be like yeah man like we're gonna cook this bread on our coleman stove and you're like what yeah right. like where <laughs> so there you know the idea of scrounging yeah that's, yeah that's not real right like you're gonna have the bullets you've got yeah going in yeah well, and, and and what i'll say is um, people say, well, I got extra guns and ammo and uh, t- so I can trade. I'm not trading people stuff they can kill me with. Right. Like, you're not getting my ammo. Right. Like, like I'll, I'll trade you a bowl of rice. I'll trade you, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll trade you, you know, some this or that, but uh, some salt or, but uh, n- no ammunition or guns are leaving are leaving my, my possession in it, a trade. There, you know, it, it, for me, I've, I've been on both sides of that over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of that is is where we're at mm-hmm. in the collapse. Right. Like if we're looking at a multi year, like James Wesley Ross in the Patriots, right? Fair enough. Like there's different kinds of preppers, right? Or survivalists. If your neighbor that you know has a horse, extra horse, and you need a horse because, right, you need a horse at this point, right? And he has a three hundred three Brit rifle mm-hmm. well you know there's got to be some equity then it turns into charity right right if you have some 303 there's a trade there right that guy's, it's a it's a he has an extra horse he's going to watch your back you guys are going to shoot yeah, right shoot at the enemy together okay fair that, enough that's where the i think the the neighbor thing when jesus talked about loving your neighbor right your neighbor was the the guy that your daughter would marry right. that you guys tended the same herd together right right that was your your right. neighbor your village right i think that's where the now rocking up like three days after the disaster to your local your local dude and be like, hey, I'm going to trade you this 308 for some some rice. That's right. that's not plausible. But I look at ammunition. Ammunition will become a currency like the gold will settle into a yeah. currency. A means of moving. Right. Money. M- moving money. Yeah. Another thing is these guys that, uh, that say... Well, you know, I'm just going to go and, you know, take all these preppers' food from them. Well, a couple of things. Uh, the preppers, even the Kumbaya preppers, got a SKS. And so, uh, and here's the thing. So you go to this prepper's house, and you kick this door open. You, you got your pistol in your hand, and and, uh, and he's serving his bowl of rice to his children. And uh, so you're telling me that you, who is a whole lot of talk. Yeah. 
are going to murder this guy in front of his kids over a bowl of rice. No, no. What's going to happen is you're going to you're going to kick that door open. You're going to go. Oh, sorry about that. Hey, will you trade this pistol for that bowl of rice? You will just have bought the world's most expensive bowl of rice with that gun you took over there. Oh, yeah. Like you're not going to become a murderer. So some people will. No. No, the ones that are psychopaths now will still yeah. be psychopaths. I think that people, when their kids are starving, they definitely beat the neighbor's brains out for something. Right. Um, I think the problem is, is they think they have, they're going to have the ability to do it. Right. Right. Like, um, and there's a lot of dudes that make that, I've heard say that, that are qualified, mm-hmm. but they don't have the stuff to begin with. Right. Like, homie, I got a news for you. Like, we got PBS 14s and PEC 15s. In the end, I'm like Superman. And thermal. And thermals and armor and a Maxim belt fed. Like, yeah, there are easier targets. You know, right. like yeah. the dudes yeah. that got stuff now, like you got dudes like real dudes. That yeah. You're like, well, I'm going to take the beans from that guy. And you're like, I'm like, I know, I know that guy. Like he's got armor for his whole family. Like his 10 year old's Ipsic shooter. Like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, like he's got like thermal for his cameras. <laughs> right. You're going to hit that house. Yeah. Right. That's like three grunts storm in a pillbox. Yeah. Yeah. Like people, they, uh, <laughs> without a flamethrower. Yeah. And you're going to do it with your Satori <laughs> and your Palmetto just as good. Right. Like there's, that goes back to living a fantasy. Yeah. yeah. Like you're never, the guy that's going to take it, unless it hits and he goes over and smokes his smoke checks, his neighbor, like in the beginning, mm-hmm. that dude ain't going to have the energy by Tuesday. Yeah. He's going to be starving. Yeah. Or he's going to be shitting his brains out because he drank out of a mud puddle. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a, a, a real big cleansing right yeah. quick. A thinning. A thinning. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll get smoked with a dude with a Lorison, though. <laughs> okay. Anything else you want to talk about as far as guns go? No, I think people spend too much time on guns. I uh, do, too. I do, too. But but we, but we can't spend zero time on it, either. <laughs> uh, ways to, lo- you know, one of the things I see the gun community, and this is the any community... Magazines are a disposable item. Yep. Right? They, yep. And they're even in the U.S. military who makes you serialize damn near everything. Yeah. Magazines are a disposable item. Right. So, like, if you only have 10 magazines for your AR-15, you are way short. Yep. Like 30. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Um, uh, well, Clint Smith is 1,000 and people freak out, but but aim for 1,000. You might not get there. And, and I'm going to go ahead and say this before anybody asks. Gen 3 PMAGs for your AR-15s. Gen 3 PMAGs. Are I'm, the, over, here, I'm are, over here dry firing this. Are, are, Gen 3 is the... Are they, He's going to take it away. Yeah. Gen, uh-huh. 3, Gen 3 is are for the Boogaloo. Are they? I'm still using like... Twos are fine. Aluminum. Don't, don't, don't throw your... Aluminum you GI. Get, get, get rid of that shit. Aluminum uh, GI mags. Get rid of that shit. Gen 2s are fine. Gen 3s are a definite technology increase over the 2s. So if you're going to buy mags and they're for preps, they're for, they're for the Boogaloo, uh, you got to get the Gen 3s. Don't get rid of your Gen 2s. Your Gen 2s are fine. Holster, sling... Right, I think people skip a lot of the small stuff that really is. Is it, if you come take a class, yep, you see we're like fuck. I needed to sling. Well, here's the thing: I tell people during class when they when they sling the rifles up to not take them off all day. Uh, wear them because people want to go back and load their mags. They want to take the rifles off all the time. I'm like, no, 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 no. We're we're training with these things because we think we might have to live in it. Yeah. So, so we're going to practice living in it today. Leave the rifle on. You listen. If you've never taken a crap with a rifle on, you 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 you've never really been anywhere. Gun handling, like living in gun handling. Yeah. Like you can own the gun and you can tell. If somebody is comfortable or not comfortable around a gun. When I went to Africa the first time, yep. one guy made, one of the PHs made one of the guys with us walk around with the unloaded rifle. Mm-hmm. Nobody said anything to me. I got it, like, because I hold my rifle, because I hold it all the time. Yeah. Carry it around. Yeah. You carry your gun with you, and you become yep. a, a gun handler. Yep. Um, and you can tell that person, take your gun with you. Like, you you know, the guy that takes his rifle out of the safe, puts it in the case, puts it in the trunk of his car, goes to the range, goes to the line, takes the rifle out of the case, loads the gun, shoots at the target, puts it back in the case. Yep. That dude has no concept of carrying that gun. Yep. Walk around the house with it. like Yeah, your house. Your house. Guys well, go, I can't walk around with a gun. You can walk around with a gun inside your house. You're just lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, but we, and listen, 
We'll talk about that. Well, I was going to talk about shotguns. Yeah, but, go ahead. Well, shotguns are a defensive tool. Right. That's right. You, you're not going to be a bird hunter. Right. Right. And more than likely, you're not going to be a like people use slugs because it is illegal to use a rifle yeah. in their area. Right. If you are starving, you will use a rifle. Yep. At night. Yep. With a flashlight. With a flashlight. Right. Uh, an 870 outside of a defensive use shotguns are a to- like not a realistic thing yeah right like we and we can talk about that in the hunting portion yeah um and it's just shotgun shells are heavy talk, and it's hard to run it, talk about it now well like we, if you've not taken a, like i can tell if somebody is taking fighting shotgun yeah. by the way they talk listen when other instructors come here <laughs> They they talk about like showing up at tactical response and shit being different. Yeah. When because they, they, they say tactical response man, these dudes show up, their guns are loaded, they're in the holster, they got fifty loaded mags, and they're here ready to fucking do this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I look at a shotgun like it's real awesome in the in the first few minutes. Yeah. Like then you need a rifle because yep. you can't haul enough shotgun shells. Yep. They're they're bulky. It's hard to load. Yeah. You know, and you learn that. And for that, like, that's where the prepper thing comes in. Every every forum and book wrote is like, buy a 1022 and an 870 with a slug barrel. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah. For what? Yeah. The slugs you're going to magically be able to shoot? Right. Like, these people don't even know what a, what a slug is. And, 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 and let alone a slug barrel, you need sabotage slugs, and they're going to try to shoot, you know, regular foster-type slugs through them, and that's not going to work I well. don't own a gun with a slug barrel. Yeah. Right. We, like, we, we don't live in a slave state. Right. So, the whole shotgun thing, if you're listening to this, there's a lot, there's a lot of good information. Come take a class. You can rent a gun from James. If you cannot make, there are good qualified instructors all over the country yep. that will rent you a gun. Yep. That you can yep. do the thing with. So uh, don't buy the revolver, buy the Canic. If you're going to get a 22, get a 1022 and skip out on all the crap and the, the 870 and the, you know, <laughs> buy the same stuff you're going to use during disasters, what you'd use for a defensive situation. Don't hear him saying not to buy an 870 hear him saying that's not at the top of the list no not even close okay uh, okay so are, are we done with guns you think? i think we're done with guns. i okay. think that should be the shortest one people spend too much time on guns we're, well, we talked about that for just near a half hour so um let's talk about uh so we talked about beans we talked about bullets now let's talk about band-aids so what i'll talk about is this um you can have your trauma kit, you know, your your like we sell the VOC, the ventilated operator kit. You can have your trauma kit and you can you can somebody get shot or stabbed or whatever, you can save their life. You can get in there and pack that wound and put a tourniquet on and, and you can save their life for now. And so what I mean by that is any any mongoloid can can learn how to save somebody's life from breathing but bleeding to death. But the, the problem is the recovery. So now we need a pallet of stuff to get this person well, including antibiotics and dressings. We got we have to change these dressings, uh, quote unquote, on the reg. That's if they don't need any surgery to 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 mend to, them up to fix what's happened, or you know the bullet didn't shatter a bone or whatever, just to get them going. And and I know you guys are like, well, I can buy the I can buy the fish. Um, the, the 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 veterinarian uh, antibiotics and stu- yeah. you know, stuff like that, and I, and I'm not against it, but I'm just saying uh, you might want to consider. Um, there's a couple of books um, where there is no dentist, where there is no doctor, and you might want to consider having those. But you might want to get it, consider getting some hands-on medical training and and certainly trauma training because that's the most important that's the that's the thing that's simple that everybody can learn everybody can learn how to put a tourniquet on um and you need to maybe try to persuade somebody in your neighborhood uh if they're a doctor or paramedic to kind of join your prepping group and uh what are your thoughts on like storing of meds or i find it easier just to find out where the doctor lives and go get him a uh, gunpoint if needed. Because that dude, most doctors are liberals, and they're they're going to turn into they're going to turn into preppers real quick. Well, I'm and he's joking, but what I'm saying is, this is why I would turn up to the doctor's place and I go, "Hey, doctor, uh, I got trade goods. 
and I've got people that I can put here at your house to protect your house and your family. Yeah. So why don't you go help my people? I'll stay here, watch your people, and we'll be friends. Yeah, that whatever works. Yeah. Like, listen, if you've got enough rice stored up, if you have enough rice stored up to feed other people, you should go find a doctor. Yeah. Right. And not the breast surgeon, right? Like, you need to, you like, yeah. like if you can locate a trauma surgeon. Uh, listen, first off, any doctor is better than any no doctor. doctor is better than no doctor. Any surgeon is better than any doctor. And any trauma surgeon trumps yeah. all that yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Find that dude. <laughs> um, and help him steal whatever he needs to steal. Oh, yeah. Like, that's, just, yeah. And there's, and when we say this, I want people to understand that there are different levels of what we consider a disaster. Yeah, and I've offered to provide security for the hospital and, and if there's ever a problem. Yeah. Because instead of like taking all the stuff, we'll just leave it there and it, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> however it works. Um, you know, even a vet. Yep. Is better. Like a vet can sew you up. Like yep. I've learned that. Like so, that, my Allison worked at a vet clinic and like she's always doctoring on me right now she tr- she treats me about like she would doctor a horse but like she's like hey you need this and this let me clean like i'm gonna you cut yourself we're gonna clean that out people need to understand that uh you everybody knows jack daniels whiskey right yeah the guy that made jack daniels he died because he kicked this safe and got grand green written on his toe and died mm-hmm. uh the uh the uh, the hemingway book it's not, not the snows of Kilimanjaro, the, the green fields of Africa or something. Guy got gored and died of infection. Mm-hmm. During the Civil War, most people died of infection. World War II as well. Mm-hmm. We're going to go back to, in a very quick time, pre-World War II or pre-World War I medicine. Well, that, that segues right into what the next subject is. We may, be, we may uh, go back in time as far as technology, in this case medical, 100 years or more. Right. For sure. That's the next heading. Oh, yeah. So when you talk about dressing, if you see pictures of a Civil War field hospital, right? Yep. They had a giant kettle over a fire. What that was, they were boiling dressings Mm -hmm. for sterilization. So they'd use the same one. Dressings were cloth. Mm -hmm. And during World War I... That was like a job. Like that was you were you would ra- the gauze were cloth and dressings were cloth and bandages were cloth and that was like the Girl Scouts would get together and roll bandages and send them over. So let me stop you. So you guys probably remember from all the old TV shows, if somebody was there, was some medical emergency, the doc would yell. If it was in a, an environment like somebody's house, they would yell, "Boil, boil the water, water and tear the sheets." Yeah, right. Because that's and mo- more than likely you're going to die. <laughs> like let's just like that's the right. that's the if you get like if you get infected, uh, yeah. you're gonna die. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, um, just like in the Civil War, if you have a limb, there's something's going on. They're gonna just uh, amputate that thing. Like the doctors, even a doctor, the best doctor in the world, who does not have his operating room yeah. and all his stuff, can't help you much. But uh, they could go, they could uh, get all medieval and uh, and take that limb off, and that's what will happen. And and there's a reason that we use the term. Uh, the term in medicine is called life over limb. That's, that's a reason that exists is because your life is more important than your appendage. Yeah, it, it, it you know, and people need to understand like. My grandmother was married at 15, right? And they were from a very rural environment. And in the that was common. And in the 8, 17, 1800s, you know, I think Marie Antoinette was, what, 13 yeah. when she was married? Yeah. Like, one, we grew up faster. People grew up faster. Yeah. Two, you were married and had family. A female was at 15 because you had to make kids to take care of you when you got older. Because once you hit your 20s, more than likely there will be birth complications like right. we see now. On top of that, the average age was like 55 years old. Yeah. People, so, did, people don't live a long so time. So at now. 20, you were halfway. Yeah. Like, if, yeah. if this was 1865, I'm 37 years old. I'm an old man. Yeah. You know, by this time. Yeah. You know, like when in guys lived to like, there were guys that lived a, a long yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. You know, they, not, not common. It wasn't common, and you, you know that was luck, yeah. Instead of yep. good, healthy living, yeah, Ab- uh, absolutely. So we'll revert quickly to a hundred years ago. Skills, you know, that goes back to learning a skill. Like there are what people are like. Well, I can provide security. Security for what? Yeah. What's more important, a trigger puller 
or a blacksmith. Dude, I, I used to tell guys in Iraq, guys would show up, their contract ended, they'd show up and they'd go, oh, hey, man, I'm a shooter. I'm, I'm like, dude, we're all shooters. Can you make the internet work? Can you work on a car? Like, can you have a 10 can, speed. Can you cook? Yeah. Like, seriously, do you, what, what, it, like, if you want to be a part of a prepping community, you, you better not show up as a shooter. You better not. Because that's something they don't even want. Like, I mean, they don't want to have to shoot people. So you better have yeah. some kind of second. You better be a jam up mechanic or a lumberjack or p- plumber or something. You know, uh, drive equipment or something. you know know how to garden or something something else. Yeah. Um, like my daughter Heather uh, is is taking a master um, gardening program right now. She's actually just finished it. She's got to do community service to actually get a certification. But I encourage that. A hundred percent, you know, like a lot more useful. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you, you know, skills like the woodworking by hand, right? Yep. So yep. like, uh, if you the, the, once again, I can't recommend these Townsend videos enough of pr- colonial spell living. that. T Townsend, like T O W N S E N D Townsend. The the YouTube video that came up was Baller Alert by Young Dolph. That was what I was watching. Apparently, Townsend and Sons, and the the this channel is called Townsend's T O W N S E N D S, and it's a store, and they sell like, like for reenactors. Yeah, yeah. And but they have one point nine million subscribers. I like it. Um, and their video yesterday was rich food for poor folks: frontier potatoes, eighteenth century milk pancakes. Uh. Making 17th century mushroom ketchup. Like okay. how people. Oh, that's the intro. <laughs> that's the intro of the guy talking. I'm sorry, but it. So what it does is it, it goes. They, there were no cookbooks. Right. So the earliest cookbooks were when printing would come for 1700s. Right. And so. And also we start having more people living in the city. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you. And then with that became you came help and instead yeah. of having cooking passed down and living hand to yeah. mouth on the frontier you went to a store right and so the, this guy is showing people how they made food not bland like there were restaurants in the 1700s there mm-hmm. were bars there mm-hmm. were and he like talks about what a soldier would eat how, mm. they show a video it's probably and i've watched it multiple times it really annoys alley on how to make salt pork yeah right which was on every ship and every soldier in the continental army yeah. got a ration of salt pork yeah well they made it at home and it would keep as you traveled right now if you need if you had a pig and knew how to kill the pig what the ability to if you if i showed up at your prepper compound and said i know how to make salt pork yeah you're in you're in yeah you're the only dude that can keep that can make a traveling ration i want to, if i can jump in there real quick there's two ways to to cure meat and we call it country ham and city ham so there's salt cured salt cured pork uh, and city ham is sugar cured mm-hmm. pork and yankee uh, ham yeah yankee ham is what we call it and so yeah, I, I like it but um but so uh the, and a lot of people don't understand that you can you can cure meat with both of those things mm. so i just wanted to say that salt so. it and then put it in a smokehouse for flavor yeah. and it'll last so i was talking my fraternity brother same one that had the moonshine steel yeah. they have a hog killing uh huh. Yeah. And I wanted to do a hog killing last fall, and that's my goal this year is to have a hog killing, an old fashioned hog you, you killing. You got to tell them what that means because it's an event. It's not it's a not thing. A, yeah. It's it, not you a can't thing. do it one person. It goes back to your neighbor. Yeah. Your neighbor was just you guys all walked to the same church. Nobody yeah. got in their car and drove across town yeah. to Starbucks. Hey, church. this this weekend I'm having a hog killing. We're next, a hog killing. Next barn we- raising, quilting. Next weekend you're doing it. So you get the hog. You would get this the sow that you were going to kill. You you shoot it and then you you string it up right. And you're talking seven eight hundred pound sow. So you can't do that by yourself without a tractor. You gut it. You keep the entrails for chitlins or whatever. You would boil the water to scrape the hair off, and you're doing this by hand. And then you start quartering the hog up, and it's a it's a process. It's a big meat hog will weigh. Four to seven hundred pounds. Let me jump in there. Uh, do you know where the term "eating high on the hog" came from? You eat the high parts of the pig. So when a pig was hanging up, they'd hang it up by its hind legs to begin butchering. And for you guys listening, and the parts on the bottom, the the skull, the feet, hogs' feet. That's what the poor people and the slaves ate. The hams and all that stuff. The, back the loins. That was all at the at the the 
top or the back right. end. And so high on the hog meant you had more money to buy the better cuts of meat that were the hams and loins and, and all there's that stuff. a lot of people out there and I don't know whether it's because of the proliferation of non Christians in the nation or whatever, but there's a lot of people who won't eat pork. Right. And that's weird to me. Yeah. Right? Like pork is a Pork is a, uh, a a standard meal for a, a lot of the world, but in this country, a pig, you can eat everything from the hoof up. Yeah, right. Right? And if you're going to be a prepper, and you're going to ra- – a cow is a lot of work. Yeah. You can raise a pig. Easy. And a pig will do you about a year, a big pig. Well, mm-hmm. you know, if you, had, if you had 400 pounds of rice and a pig – you can last a long time. Right. And a pig will eat and, and pretty comfortably. Yeah. And you can peel, feed the pig the guts out of the squirrel and the turnip. Like, you could make a turnip patches for the pig. A pig will eat about anything. Yeah. A big pig, you'd kill a pig a year. Mm-hmm. If you go back in the Foxfire books and how the people in Appalachia lived, they couldn't. They didn't have cattle. Right. So if you were up in coal country, what coal country for those of you that aren't that don't know anything about America is West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Tennessee, and Western North Carolina. Appalachia. Appalachia. There wasn't a lot of flat land, and there was not a lot of grazing for cattle because back in the day you didn't take your wagon twenty miles down by cow feed, right? You grazed it. Mm-hmm. Well, you could not. You might not have anywhere to graze a cow, but a pig could live in the woods. Yeah. So when we're talking about having a hog killing and salting that and knowing how to treat that meat, that is a, a, a lost skill making sausage. And now people don't even, they cheat. You know, yeah. they're like, oh, we're going to liquid smoke it. Or, yeah, right. Right. You've got to be able to do it. And the reason you did it in the fall was to do, because uh, it was cold. Right. And one of the things, as I said earlier, for people that know, one of the most valuable things, the one of the, the hardest thing to get in nature, is fat, and that was one of the main things that people got from the pig. I mean, they could burn it for lamp oil and all kinds of stuff, but they needed they needed lard, they needed fat. That's why it was such a part to of, make lye soap. To make lye, lye soap was was lard and and lye and uh, ash <laughs> and, ash and uh, maybe some lavender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what keeps you. That, you know, you wash your clothes in it, but that's what keeps you from getting diseased. Yeah, is washing and yeah. what treating your wounds and washing up afterwards. Yeah, right. That goes mm-hmm. along. That goes a long way because everything's dirty. So, I mean, you know, we're going to go back to in a in a long term disaster like a, like a true collapse uh, where there's like no power and nobody trying to turn the power back on. There's no water and no no functional government on a local, state, or federal level. Right. We're talking. You not want to learn how to make some lye soap. Yeah. Or have a work. You know, even if you don't live on a farm, like I have a working knowledge of how to butcher. A pick, right, right. Like I, I've, yeah. I've been around agriculture. I've, I've, you know, it might have been twenty years, but I've watched. There's, there's a difference between like there's hands on, there's a working knowledge, there's a, and then there's people that just have no idea that you can make soap from a pig. Yeah, and most of the population is in the, how, you soap comes from a pig. Right. That's where most people start the conversation. Right, right. and the, the reason the pig fat was so important is that that's what softens your skin after the lie ripped all the germs off of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Uh, you'd use it for cooking. Uh, lard was used in this country for almost every recipe up until Crisco came along with you know the the uh, the advent of the modern kitchen. We used pork fat to cook yeah. it, season everything. Uh, your that, beans, mm-hmm. your beans mm-hmm. that you were going to cook that we talked about in the last episode. Mm-hmm. Will taste a lot better if they have a piece of fat back in. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it goes from being a side dish to a meal. Yeah, and that's the, and, and, and throwing some of that bread or some cornbread. Like literally, I grew up on that. Like you can you can live and be pretty happy with a big old bowl of beans and some cornbread. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're feeding, you know, the, all this goes back to fuel consumption. That I think we talked about in the last episode. If you've got twelve people. You could just damn near put that two of those people are going to be cooking full time. Yeah, like the cook and the helper, or right. the scull- scullery maid, or whatever you want to call it. And you're going to have two people, two adults, that's full time, ten to twelve hours a day job. It's going to be cutting wood and dragging water. Yeah. And the closer when you think about that, like you need to really let that sink in. The closer you get to a water source, yeah, and the closer you are to the wood pile. 
the more hands you have for other stuff. But yeah. if you if you look at how a ca- even going back farther, let's go back farther than a hundred years to a, like a castle situation. Yeah, they'd have a bunch of trees running. So you you had entire groups of working class that were devoted to hauling water and wood. Right, that was a job, like right. a full time. Yeah. Your career was getting wood. Right, the wood cutter. Yeah, the yeah, like in Hansel and Gretel, yeah. the wood cutter, the woodsman. Yeah, yeah, that his job, like he cut wood all day. And right. it wasn't to make logs for houses. It was to burn. <laughs> All right. All right. Moving on. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's oh, good. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, you, you're, an advocate, you're an advocate of uh, goats as well, right? Yeah. So we are a beef-based, we are a beef-based society now. Right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're they're genetically big. The, the meat per pound, people like beef. They like the flavor of beef. Um, you can grow it commercially, move it commercially. Goat, sheep are harder to do. We don't eat a lot of lamb here in Europe. They eat a lot of lamb. And the rest of the world eats a lot of goat, right? Like when you were in Iraq, a lot right. of goat. Oh, yeah. A lot of goat. Every, in Africa, a lot of goat. South like, America, like goat. Like our next door neighbor had a goat, and, I, and it was making the goat noises and all that stuff. And then the next day, we saw the, the hide hanging up. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, goats are, if you are a prepper or a beginner survivalist, you can get a, a small herd of goats. And a goat, you can get, get goat milk and eat goat and you have goat hide, right? Like, there's there's islands in the Atlantic that were settled, you know, in the 1500s. Ships used to take goats on the on the ship with them. And they're fairly intelligent. They're not as hard to deal with as a pig. Um, and they're not dangerous a billy is not as dangerous as a bull. Right. So you're not going to be calling the vet to AI your show heifer. AI. Artificially inseminate your show heifer, right? right? Most people don't keep a bull around. But when we were kids, when you were a kid, and I was, and there's an age difference, but this this country was the damn near the same up until, not, let's say, 1990. I say the country was the same until Atari was invented. Right. So <laughs> you remember here in Camden, there was you, wherever you lived, there was probably a field nearby with a bull. Mm-hmm. And you were told, don't, don't go, go to in there. Field, yeah. Why? The thing was dangerous. <laughs> right. Right? It was a dangerous animal. In, in bulls, in other countries, bulls maim people on the regular basis. Now we've moved to AI, where they artific- they, they collect the semen from a, a stud bull, and they, they dole it out, and then you artificially inseminate a lot of the cattle to keep from having a bull because they're dangerous. There's people that raise bulls and and that's their profession. Well, in a in a prepper situation, you're not going to do that. You're going to need a stud bull mm-hmm. and so you're going to have to feed the thing and all it's going to do is once a year it's going to screw. And you're yep. going to feed it all year. Yep. You're going to protect it because if it dies, you can't reproduce. With a goat, a billy goat's a lot easier to keep than a bull. Yep. Right? And goats are eating, and then talking about Hundred years ago, we're talking about it. You have no electricity, so how are you going to store that meat? You're going to have to smoke it, whatever you do with it. Twenty five or thirty pounds of goat meat mm-hmm. or or sheep lamb is easier to uh, butcher, contain, haul, yep. smoke than five hundred pounds yep. of beef. Yep. And uh, so another thing about goats, and I've seen this before, and, I, and uh, like uh, so we're not going to have luxury fuel like you know mowing the grass either you're going to get a sling blade and you're going to cut that the grass around your house because if you don't cut the grass around your house now you got rodents and you know and it'd stuff. probably be beat down because you're spending so much time outside well okay but, that, but, but i'm just saying uh, like yeah. stuff like that and so goats will help keep all that the, all that stuff down and, and i know guys that have had like thickets of briars and stuff like that and they'll take a goat and put a chain around its neck and tie a brick to it and take it out there and that goat will eat a circle around it yeah and then they throw the brick into another place and then the goat eats a circle around that so even if you just you know have goats for to help you keep the the bush beat back around your property they're pretty handy for that yeah they're pretty self you know self-sustaining there was a picture in the history of cab county which is a book written uh, by the, uh, Mr. Webb that passed away about DeKalb County. And there's pro- honestly, there's probably a history of Camden. Mm-hmm. But in that book, it shows a house on the square, and the house was, it was the fourth or fifth generation to live in that house. And the lady was out sweeping the, the dirt yard. Right. And people, I right. think about that, well, I doing what? Well, you think you're by oil lamp. Mm-hmm. Right. So you were outside from the time the sun came up to the time the sun set. Everything you did was outside. Right. 
over 50 years, that ground gets so beat down because everything you're doing, you're working in the front yard, you're making your life soap in the front yard. Yeah. It is hard. Packed. Like, it's packed solid. So you sweep the crap off the dirt because yep. the dirt's hard as a rock. And yep. you sweep that. It's like you, having a stone floor. Yeah, you sweep it clean. You sweep the sweep the barnyard type deal yep. uh, because it was hard. And people don't understand that, but most of your activities are going to be outside. Yep. Or on the porch where it's covered. You'd also work on the porch. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, um, I think uh, that's pretty good uh, for part two. I think we've uh, <laughs> boom, <laughs> we've done that pretty well, and um, and we got we got a lot more, uh, a lot more, and uh, and we're so lucky to have Jacob here, uh, expounding his obvious wealth of knowledge with all of us. I'm learning too, as you guys are. And and every once in a while, I have a little thing to annoy Jacob by saying, but, uh, um, but it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to capture this, this information finally for people to listen to. And, uh, and I really appreciate you, Jacob, come out here and doing this. It's, it's not, it's a, it's a big deal for me. It's a big deal for, for our our viewers, our listeners. And and, we've been talking about it a long time. Yeah. This was the class that you guys wouldn't pay for. That's true. (laughs) It's true. All right, right, guys. uh, James Jager and Jacob for Tactical Response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends.